I guess it's always a special feeling when you visit an important place of your past again. Like you're suddenly transported back in time, though at the same time you know that all these different feelings and memories that are coming back in an instant are mainly just that. Memories. This little mountain farm called Dream Valley is the place where I first lived when I moved to Norway. I have spent a lot of time here over many years and it was this place that showed me how a different, more simple way of living in alignment with nature is actually possible. Back then Dream Valley was still owned by my friend Tina who brought this whole project to life and who not only inspired me but very many people with her way of being and what she created. We shared great times together, with many good conversations, working on the farm, realizing art projects together, going on very chaotic trips with the herd and many evenings by the campfire. After she passed away in November 2020, I have not really been in Dream Valley anymore. I guess it just all needed some time. But since a few months, I felt a longing to go back there and seek the connection again, also to my friend Vivian, who owns and runs the place now. And so I finally did it. Na, habt ihr eine Tour gemacht? I hope you're tired I think this is the first real spring day that we're having this year. It's yeah. five degrees and the snow has started to melt and uh, it's, it's a feeling that is definitely quite hard to describe. <laughs> it's very, very nice. Dream Valley always has been a place with a very special spirit and it was really nice to see how it has changed and how in so many ways it's also still the same. It's quite a small farm, the houses are very old, the lifestyle is still simple, the northern winter is long and also the horses have started to age during the time. So, life is definitely not always easy here and I admire Vivienne for facing all these challenges and taking over this place. In many ways her story is similar to mine and she has agreed to tell it for you in this video. So I hope that you will enjoy it and that it will inspire you. <laughs> For everyone who doesn't know, this is Vivian, and she kindly agrees to um, yeah, tell her story a little bit of uh, how she came to this place and how the life has been and uh, yeah, I think that's maybe also something we can just start with like, because I remember that when <laughs> we first met, I think uh, 
I think I was here actually when you were here the first time. That's true. You That's were the true, first right? one I saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting on the platform with the Ivy. <laughs> so how was your first experience here and like when did you decide that you want to stay? I came here after a while taxi drive over the mountain and uh, I just thought okay did you think about where you're going? You're in the middle of nowhere and it was my first journey alone for such a long time and uh, then I walked over the bridge and all those doubts were gone mm -hmm. <laughs> and I strangely felt like coming home because I didn't really know that feeling before yeah and it just felt over the whole month it felt supernatural to be here but each time I thought about I have to leave this place again I could start crying immediately and then I remember sitting down there by the river and I just promised myself that I will do everything I can to get this feeling of aliveness back into my everyday life that I got back up here and and one thing came to the other. <laughs> if people then would have told me, mm -hmm. you know, what was it from then on? Two years later? Yeah, that Two was years. 2018 yes. and 2020. Yeah. Oh, that went really quick. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because I was here three times before, or like the third time I came here, Tina mm -hmm. asked me. Yeah. You already made that agreement that you would take over the place and Tina would live here like at some part yeah. or something like that, right? That was in 2020. Yeah. When she, because I came up here and it was a super rainy cold July day and mm -hmm. we were having dinner here. It was in the COVID time, so we were only the two of us. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, okay, I have to tell her. And then I told her, yeah, like, could you imagine? I would love to spend like half a year in Norway each year. And mm -hmm. she could imagine that that takes place here, part mm -hmm. of it. And she was like, yeah, uh, like we say in German, to fall into house with the door, yes. <laughs> just to be straightforward. Yeah, then I can also do that right away. Do you want to take over? Well. <laughs> in case something happens or anything, that's mm -hmm. like, and I was like, <laughs> well, <laughs> and I remember all these things, concerns around, never spent the winter up here. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine how it would be. So how was that journey? Like from this like rough plan, maybe I can take it over to <laughs> like suddenly being in the position of like having to come and own this place. Like how was that journey for you? That was on one way meant to be and on the other way happening so much faster than I could even follow. Mm -hmm. And I just, in preparation for a talk, I've been reading my diaries and I <laughs> found one sentence I wrote in there that when I left here in 2020, I wrote um, for the first time, it doesn't feel like leaving this place, but it feels like preparing for a new home. So, so I knew it in a way. I knew it. And also mm -hmm. when I was here, I knew that I wouldn't see Tina again. I stood in the Ningabi and I looked after her and I was just having the thought of maybe I see her the last time now. Oh wow. And of course I saw her again like mm -hmm. on on screen, but never mm -hmm. never in real life anymore. How how has your life been since that? Like, I would say it was growing up and being thrown out to find a place in the world um, in a very raw way. I was pretty much in a survival mode because it was a shitload of <laughs> responsibility and it just showed me of how much more we are actually capable mm. if we just go for it than if we just worry for it. I did worry a lot but I also did a lot. Fun and lightness, they have just kind of disappeared mm. between responsibilities and kind of this inner fight of do I really want to do that and uh, it's actually getting better the more I'm really there and here and like both legs on the ground and 
I'm starting to learn that there's a pretty good way of, of living with the ups and downs and the, the bad and hard sides of life. To integrate them, not only to postpone and push them away. <laughs> because they are... Now, after two years, I feel like all this stuff I went through, I would say I would have to go through it again with the experience I have now because it just brought me to a way better place than I was before. I have way more responsibility and I'm much more kind of stuck at a place now <laughs> than I was before but I feel so much freer because I kind of have faced this thing of yeah what if you're not gonna be able to finance your own dream. What is if your dream is shattering <laughs> in your own hands because you just didn't make it? The thing that really made it, that I'm still here, was the fact that it was harder to give up than to carry on. I would have regretted it if I would have not done it. So I had to do it. That was so clear. I remember, like it was yesterday, that the last summer I was here and Tina asked me, I knew if I'm gonna do that, that's gonna be a very hard chapter of my life, probably the whole time that I'm here. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be good times and I'm gonna grow, but that's a hard school for me because it also was my decision to skip like a normal education, <laughs> let's call it like that, and <clears throat> really be like, okay, I'm gonna take responsibility and find creative solutions for how I'm gonna finance my life and my dreams and uh, also to to learn from life, not in the first place from a university or a teacher. And uh, I learned a lot about it and I would not only recommend it. <laughs> and I would do it always again. <laughs> <laughs> I would always okay. choose that way again. Yeah. What is your dream then for this place or is something that you are like want to create here? Yeah, at the moment it's I'm um, somewhere it's it has like two legs the whole baby. It has this leg of really grounded farm life and I love to live here and this harsh weather and you only know that when you have been living up north or when your heart is kind of beating for that. And on the other hand, like the other leg is this, it's such an, I feel like this place is such an inspiration and that's also what I hear from people around me. So it started as a big inspiration for me and kind of took me on my way. Uh, that is, <laughs> has come here now, <laughs> but still it's like, I still remember what drove me to come here and it was just such a relief to see uh, as a young person looking for my place in life that there is other possibilities than what I know and what I grew up with. And that is definitely further on going to be the other leg, then it, it reaches people in their own way of dreaming whatever they dream of for themselves. Cute. 
If you would like to support Vivienne, this place and the vision, you can actually now do so over Patreon with a small contribution of your choosing. I'm sure it would be much appreciated and I will put the link to that, her website and Instagram in the description. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope that you enjoyed this little excursion to Dream Valley and I will see you in my next video again.